So it's a pleasure having you on board today. Welcome to the Sustainability Roundtable with a 360 approach uh, across the supply chain while highlighting the best business practices in our industry. Today, there are three key messages we'd like to emphasize. The first one is that the future of fragrances should not compromise, neither on quality nor strength. Second is that transparency and continu continuous improvement are essential to succeed. And third, collaboration will exponentially accelerate the speed of change. So today, we're gonna introduce each other and then go through an insightful conversation. I hope we're gonna like it. My name is Valérie Lovisa. I'm a sustainability consultant in the field of fragrance cosmetics, and I will be your co-moderator today, along with Dominique Brunel. Thank you, Valérie. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Dominique Brunel. I'm one of the co-founders of NE, the olfactory cultural movement. So we assign the, the task to ourselves to raise awareness about olfactory culture among general audience and also professionals such as you through a whole range of printed publication like this one and uh, podcast, online website, uh, magazines, uh, and also by participating to such uh, events. But before we go further into to this discussion, I'm going to ask everyone here to introduce uh, himself, herself, uh, beginning with uh, Xavier. Um, and also, Xavier, uh, during your presentation, if you give, can give us uh, your opinion in you know, three words, so your view of, in three words about sus what sustainability in fragrance should be. Okay, yeah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xavier Renard. I'm the uh, global head of uh, fine fragrances for uh, Gibraltar. And uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the both of you for uh, inviting uh, all of us to, uh, to participate to this, uh, to this event. Uh, three words for, for sustainability. I'm not sure I will have those three words, but I think the, uh, the first one for me and the most important is probably responsible. It is our responsibility to really look at sustainability as a main component of doing business going forward. And uh, there are many, many ways to do it, and uh, we'll be able to uh, hopefully uh, articulate what, the, what those ways are. But, you know, again, those three words, responsibility, listen to the consumers, and generate a positive impact uh, to the, uh, towards the product and the consumer. Nathalie? Uh, good morning. My name is Nathalie Templer. I'm working with Expression Perfumes, uh, and I'm a perfumer for the Middle East region. Um, I'm covering uh, the Gulf country and some part of Africa and uh, India. So for me, sustainability in uh, three words could be also the complexity of all the system sustainability in different level. And also a big uh, also level, of, it will be the equality in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, societal uh, uh, direction. Okay. And now, Michel, if you don't mind, could you please tell a few words about yourself? And while insisting on what is at stake when we when it comes to sustainability at IFF and especially LMR. Sure. My name is Michel Chauvin. I'm account manager at LMR for natural ingredients, LMR by IFF. And the three pillars of sustainability that I'm going to talk about today: the two first directions of people and planet people because of all the different actions we take with our certification, with our sourcing, and all the different things I'm going to display during this presentation. The planet is all about preserving the environment, biodiversity, the ecosystem, and all the different uh, ways we're, we're working towards this goal. Whether we're talking about renewability, circularity, biodegradability, all these different topics. But the third also, the third uh, pillar would be emotions, because I think we should not forget that we work in an industry we're responsible for creating emotions, and this is a, we should not just focus on creating green, clean ingredients, we should also include the emotional aspect into it. And the more we engage with our customers, the more eng engaged and consistent they will be in their purchase, and we'll also optimize resources with an, an increase of engagement, so totally right, yes. Antoine? Hello? Please. Yes, you can hear me? Yes. 
good morning, everyone. And uh, it's a pleasure to be invited to this round table. Thank you for coming. Especially to talk about sustainability, because sustainability is a topic which is very close to my heart. So my name is Antoine de Rydmatten, and I'm a general manager of Euro Fragrance. I'm also responsible for um, fine fragrance globally. And I'm the sponsor of our sustainability initiative. So I think uh, everything we're talking about, um, sustainable sourcing, eco-design, biodegradability, and everything, it's very important. But at the end of the day, it is very important also to have a um, holistic approach and to make sure that the whole company is following uh, the sustainable principle. So that's what we're doing at uh, Your Fragrance. We are a very young company. So since the beginning, the owner was promoting those values. But then we've been growing, growing, and growing. And we felt that it was not enough just to do it, but you will really had a, to put in place a strategy. And that all our critical decision, they should be taken, taking in account our sustainability. So a small group of people from uh, different um, division, from HR, from production, from uh, regulation, <coughs> they work together and uh, we defined our strategy and then we were able to start to communicate about it. So I'm very proud that in 2021 we could publish our first sustainability report and we just um, published the one for 2021 a few weeks ago. And this is something we're going to talk about so, when it comes to certification, exactly. Continuous improvement and transparency yeah. towards our customer and then as well collaborators along the supply chain to see that we are improving ourselves from one year to another. And, and just to, so the four yeah. axes we are focusing on yeah, is sure. to promote uh, safety and biodiversity and uh, also engage with community and resources. So there are the four main axes. Okay, so we'll try to cover as many axes as yes, possible today. We'll Sorry. have only one hour conversation, Sorry. but we already started our conversation last year because we got the chance to have two, two sustainability roundtables as well. And today we're gonna have in total two, one today and one tomorrow around new technology and how we can uh, leverage AI to better our industry. So. Now today we have something very special for the beauty world is that we are also trying to communicate with Roland Altenberger, CEO at Luzi based in Switzerland, but he could unfortunately not join through live Zoom. So we recorded his interviews previously and we're going to play three videos of Roland during our conversation. So please bear with us if in matter of technicity it's not perfect because I can see Roland was moving throughout Antoine's speech where he was not supposed to talk. So now I'm turning to Roland from the very beginning. Roland, could you please introduce yourself and in a few words uh, tell us what is at stake when it comes to sustainability applied to the fragrance and cosmetic industry. Hi there, I'm Roland from Luzi. I'm one of the owners of our company, which belongs 100% to my family. I am a member of the board and one of the two co-CEOs. So we don't really have three pillars of sustainability. To us, sustainability is more like a home with people who live in there and who work hard every day to bring our company forward. We as a family are convinced that shaping our company in a sustainable and responsible way is a must-do. And this conviction comes from the strong values that we as a family share and which are derived from our various scientific backgrounds. We obviously want to create long-term growth and we want to be profitable. And for that, sustainability and responsibility, in our view, are key. Why? Because they create purpose. And if you look at some of the most flourishing companies these days, they usually all have a very strong purpose. It is purpose that unleashes forces that could otherwise not be created. But if you... Did we finish the first part with Roland? Yes? Okay. So we're going to start our conversation and I'd like to turn to you, Xavier. Can you hear me? 
we're going to start the kind of the discussion by deep diving into the three pillars of sustainability that you mentioned during your introduction, which are sourcing, biodegradability, and conscious design. So if you don't mind, for the first part of our conversation, we're going to focus on naturals, naturals with natural producers with uh, Givaudan and IFF with LMR. So please, could you tell us a bit more about sourcing? Yes, absolutely. Um, um, and you're right, before I go into the, uh, the sourcing itself, I, I just want to mention that uh, sustainability in general is an end-to-end -end process. You know, it really starts with the understanding of the consumers, actually, um, to all the way to the agronomy um, that will be used to cultivate some of the products. So, I think it's not just one area that we need to focus to focus on, but we need to really have that end-to-end -end approach if we want to truly do a good job. Um, at Jibudan, we have a, um, a program, an initiative that we've had uh, for many, many years now that is called uh, Sourcing for uh, Sourcing for Good. It's all about um, uh, having the the right approach when it comes to actually uh, purchasing product and the supply chain. And I think this is, this is also a program that is not just about naturals. I mean, here we're focusing on naturals, but it's not just about natural. It's about the way we deal with our supply chain and the way we deal with our suppliers. And um, uh, th that sourcing for good program is based on relationship that we create. I think this is not about a one-time deal. It's about creating long-term relationship. It's about education, it's about sharing, it's about promoting uh, uh, good ways to, uh, to, to cultivation. So it's about also uh, creating a positive impact to the communities we work with. It's, and that, that's, why, that's why I like about, I like to talk about sharing because it's not just about trying to get something from the suppliers, but it's a, it's a give and it's a take it's a permanent way of, uh, of dealing with, uh, with the people that we, uh, uh, that we buy the, uh, the raw materials from. So the agronomy is uh, very important because, you know, as a farmer, it's always, uh, I mean, you know, we deal with people who've been doing the same thing for years, but in reality, you know, we like to bring new ways of uh, cultivating, looking at agronomy differently, uh, and we have many, many programs that, uh, that, is all, that are always focusing on improving the way, uh, the way we do business. So again, it's an end-to-end -end process. We know what sourcing for good means. It's about doing good for the communities, but it's not so much about, uh, it's really about meaning what we, uh, what we do. Thank you for sharing, Xavier. It was very clear and insightful, very inspiring for the rest of uh, farmers and the industry. Um, so thank you. Now I'm turning to Michelle. So how do you tackle sustainable sourcing at IFF? So obviously sourcing is a very important topic for, for LMR, for IFF. Mm -hmm. the, the first thing I would like to say is that the, the reason why we're successful with our sourcing strategy is we have the, the vertically integrated sourcing platform concept implemented. And we have many of these platforms around the world where we make sure we have uh, a holistic impact like Antoine was talking about. Mm -hmm having the possibility to, to really uh, integrate the whole supply chain uh, allow us really to, to make the right decisions, especially when it comes to promoting sustainability strategies. And I would, for example, take the, the, the case of our sandalwood platform that is very interesting in that aspect because we, we made a partnership with a company called Liflor on the island of uh, Lifu, which is located near to, in, in the archipel of uh, New Caledonia. And we, this partnership allows us really to make uh, a long-term commitment with, with the, the local community, the local Chepene Kanak tribe of the island. And uh, by prefunding all the, the infrastructure and allowing to create this, this platform, we, we saw a lot of positive impact on the, on the people, on the livelihood of the communities. We, especially in terms of unemployment, this was a big plague in the island, a lot of young people leaving the island to go to find work in Noumea or in other countries. 
and really allowing the, the local population to, to have hope and to, to strive economically uh, while also creating a wonderful product. There's a new olfactive signature on the market because as you know, the sandalwood is, uh, has three different origins, Indian, Australian, and now the New Caledonian. And I would also like to, to speak about the reforestation uh, aspect. The, the law since 2015 in New Caledonia requires to plant three trees, three sandalwood trees for every plant harvested. At IFF Alemar, we, we, we plant 10 trees per plant harvested. So we really try to make an impact, to, make, to do more good, as our motto. Uh, but in a, in, a, in a more general sense, uh, exactly like Xavier was saying, we need to have a, a holistic, a genuine impact. And we need to look at the supply chain to make sure that we can have this, this kind of impact. It's beautifully said. And there is, we could talk about this for hours, huh? So really, <laughs> like about, just about the sourcing, we could be here for hours. So you would miss the whole beauty world show. And there is another point very interesting at LMA that we need to discuss today. It's the use of natural, in, in, natural ingredients in fragrances is very controversial, right? Because instead of using the soil to actually feed people and grow food, we are growing plants that we're gonna harvest for fragrances. So how sustainable is that? But then you developed a new technology as well, and then you were talking uh, through our uh, separate interviews about uh, conscious collection with green solvents. Could you tell us more about this? Sure. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that obviously the, the carbon footprint of natural ingredients compared to synthetic scent ingredients is, uh, is, is, is indeed is uh, more problematic, but the reason why is that we need to take into consideration the, the use in formula as well as the olfactive performance. Naturals are used 2% maximum in, in, a, in a fragrance in principle. And if you take into account this, this, uh, this criteria, the, the impact is, um, has to be redefined. Uh, concerning the conscious extract collection, this is a, for us a big innovation because it's the first uh, collection of absolutes that are, first of all, that are produced with a 100% biosourced solvent. We do not use any petrochemicals, and in that sense, we make, uh, we release less carbon footprint into the atmosphere while creating olfact new olfactive signatures that have an interesting uh, innovative aspect. So, to go back to what I was saying in, in the first and the three pillars that we want to promote. We really try to have this, this uh, approach where we can make s substantial steps towards this transformation while creating some, some R&D, some innovation, something that can be used with excitement. Yeah, I can see. Thank you for sharing. It was very clear, crystal clear. Now I'm turning to Dominica. We're going to talk about biodegradability. Yeah, and again, we're going <laughs> to ask uh, uh, Michel because also what is interesting, you talked you just talked about sourcing, very upstream, and then once you have source and once you have used the, the materials uh, to produce also ingredients, and once it has been used in perfumes, uh, at some point it will disappear in the nature. So we ask ourselves, what about the biodegradability? You said the industry was very uh, um, uh, demanding, maybe more than uh, we're going to interrupt you for a ah. second because ah. we have a microphone issue on the beauty world. Ah. Yeah, but creativity oh. strikes of constraints, right? <laughs> Sh um, should I uh, renew? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we wanted to talk about biodegradability. And so, as you said, Michel, uh, the industry, the, maybe the customers, your customers, are more demanding sometimes of biodegradability than uh, of uh, net uh, carbon. Uh, impact. Correct. So the the question, the first thing we should look at is what is the main concern for companies nowadays? And, and indeed, uh, you could argue biodegradability would be one of the key concerns. But even before that, the main aspect to take into consideration is the, the greenhouse gas emission reduction. And then the next question is how do we get there? How do we reduce our carbon footprint? How do we reduce the greenhouse gas emissions? And that's when we start looking at the attributes. Is it going to be through renewability, circularity, biodegradability? Often, we would say 
customers would look at biodegradability as being one of the key aspects to, to work on that project. Yes. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, thank you, Michel. Very, um, uh, very interesting. And Antoine, uh, maybe you would like to do, um, give us a few words, a uh, so few thoughts about, uh, especially about your your icon, maybe program. So, first of all, uh, it's clear that um, biodegradability is a super important uh, topic. <coughs> now, your fragrance, we are. A creating uh, fragrance creation company means that we are buying 99.99% of our ingredients from uh, outside. Some from Givaudan, some from IFF, some from others companies. So we depend a lot, a lot uh, on them. But on um, the other hand, um, we created a program which is called Icon which stand for uh, innovation, commitment, origin, and nature. And there are two aspects in this uh, program. One is to make sure that we get the um, best natural ingredient, both in terms of quality and sustainability, generic one, but also some specialties. So if you go and visit your, our stand uh, here in Beauty World, you will discover some uh, pink flower lotus, some uh, blue cypress oil, or uh, there is a geranium rosinat, which are coming from farm, which are managed only by women. So those are specialties that we want. There, there will be small quantities, but really give a signature to perfume and to be used mainly with a niche uh, market. And the other aspect of uh, Icon, uh, we will talk maybe a bit later about it. It's really an index table. So, f for example, for biodegradability, for each raw material, we know, according to the information we receive from our suppliers, what is the level of biodegradability, and each perfumer can see when he is compounding, at the end, what is the biodegradability of his formula. So it's possible as well to be sustainable and then to source sustainably, even though Com we don't produce our own naturals or Com ingredients. Completely, and it's also to do some partnership also with, uh, with some people. <laughs> We are working also with some startups, you know, there are new way of extraction, there are plenty of innovation everywhere, so yeah, the it, world it's is not about booming. waiting that it comes to you, yes. you have to go. You uh, create it, yes. you create change. Yes. And then, Xavier, we're turning to you right now, talking about biodegradability, because we were discussing about your portfolio of ingredients, so then what's your objective by 2030, how are you going to improve? I think our, our responsibility, and again, I, I always talk about responsibility because for me it's a key word that we have towards the uh, uh, towards the uh, the industry and towards the uh, the consumers and also towards the the people where uh, to whom we sell uh, <laughs> ingredients is to ensure that uh, by 2030, this is an objective, 100%, um, 95 to 100 percent of our palette will be um, renewable and biodegradable. Today, we estimate that in terms of a number of ingredients, we are at about 40%, less in volume used, uh, but we have this objective to be at 100% because at the end of the day, this is also what our customers' objective is. You know, and they've been very, very clear uh, about um, what those objectives are and whether it's uh, companies like Unilever or L'Oreal, they, um, they have committed to, uh, to their consumers because at the end it's not about commit, you know, it's not about a commitment to, uh, uh, to the analysts, to the, the shareholders, it's about a, a commitment to the, uh, to the consumers. They have committed to, be, uh, to, uh, to launch product that would be 100% uh, renewable. <clears throat> and that is our objective. <clears throat> and we, uh, we are doing it many different ways. I mean, obviously, uh, I don't know if you want me to get into this at, at the moment, but the, uh, the point is um, we are looking at, at, at different ways to do it in terms of the molecule themselves. Uh, we, have, uh, we have programs that should allow us uh, down the road to really uh, leverage the use of our carbons and really start from un renewable um, uh, starting points. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a commitment. It's all about uh, leveraging the carbon 
but not just uh, not just that. It's about also lo looking at bio transformation. I think the best example that I can think of is a product that we have in the market that is called Ambrofix, which is about the bio transformation of uh, sugar cane. And instead of using the clarisage the same way we had been doing it for the last uh, 50 years, uh, we are starting from sugar cane. Uh, where through a, a, a kind of fermentation we go to, we, we go to an ingredient called farne farnesine and through another two uh, transformation processes we get to that uh, ambrofix molecule. Just to, to tell you, I mean it's 100% renewable of course, but it's also using 100 times less in terms of uh, space, uh, agricultural space, that uh, we would have needed if we would have wanted to use uh, or to start from clary sage. So all of this is really good. Now we have to really uh, go all the way to 100%. And uh, the funny thing is when we discussed that three years ago, we thought 2030 was really far away. It's 2023 now, so uh, seven years to go. Uh, I'm not saying the clock is ticking, but uh, it, it's highly complex. Uh, are we going to get there? Uh, we have a commitment, so I know uh, as a company we will get there. It's not going to be uh, it's not going to be uh, easy, but uh, we'll uh, we'll do everything it takes. And again, we, we use we use different types of uh, of approaches. I think the at the end the palette of perfumers, and I'm sure there are perfumers in this room, will change, will evolve. There's nothing scary about this. This is normal. It's just an evolution. We'll be using different types of products. I mean, we are also looking at using upcycle products in perfumery, which for example, we have a new apple, we have new fruit that have never been used through different style of, uh, the, of uh, transformation processes. I think it's exciting, more than scary, if, uh, if you ask me. Uh, I think that will open up uh, uh, new olfactive uh, profiles, uh, new olfactive routes. Does that mean that maybe we will have to, uh, to leave some ingredients behind? Most probably, to be honest, but that's okay because we know we've done it. We've done it for the last 30, 40 years through different types of regulation and we're still very much alive. <laughs> I think uh, uh, what you uh, see around uh, here is just a proof of, uh, of the fact that we are highly resilient in, uh, when it comes to perfumery creation. Thank you very much, Xavier. And now one quick example as well because Givaudan and IFF are very strong into upcycled ingredients, but we have also Eurofragrance investing slowly but surely into upcycling, right? Yes. So, uh, first of all, it's also by buying some ingredients from other companies. But uh, three, four years ago, we decided that we should start to have also our own captive. <coughs> so, um, we showcased last year uh, in Dubai, Lame du Bois, which is a... Uh, it's coming from the sawdust of trees, which have a program of reforestation. So there is completely circularity. And uh, not only it's upcycle, but it's also uh, an ingredient which has a multifacet um, in the woody note and bringing something really different to perfume, making a, a big boost to, to all the formula. So that's the important, I mean, to be sustainable, but at the same time, making sure that it's helping the creativity of our perfumers. You so all, we hope to have more to come. We all, you all make us want to smell the ingredients. So we don't have time today to smell the ingredients. Maybe next year we'll have like one hour and a half conversation where we can smell ingredients that are very sustainable, biodegradable, renewable, upcycled. And now we have a last um, speaker talking on the topic. So we would like to turn to Roland Altenberger on the same question regarding biodegradability. Well, I can actually confirm that biodegradability is currently the hottest sustainability topic on parts of our customers. Renewability is certainly another one. Now, starting from these, we're not too far away from a concept of which I would like to talk about now. A concept of which I believe will be of paramount importance in the long run, not only to our industry, but to society as a whole. It's the concept of the circular economy. 
We all consume an incredible amount of goods throughout our life. A lot of resources are used to produce those goods, lots of energy are used to process them. What remains is waste. To illustrate the problem, imagine piling up all the goods that you ever bought and they came to an end of life. What an incredible amount of waste in front of you. Now even if part of it was treated, there always remains some toxic residue. So how can we sustain such a large consumption in the long run if we know that resources on this planet are finite? How can we avoid pollution and waste? Fortunately, the answer to this question is not to stop consumption. The answer is the circular economy. So what is it about? What's the idea? The idea is to circulate products for as long as possible, to avoid waste and pollution and to regenerate nature. I know this sounds abstract. So what does it concretely mean to a cosmetics product? When designing a circular cosmetics product, several aspects have to be challenged and possibly redesigned. The packaging, the base and the fragrance oil. Packaging has to be reusable. It has to be made out of non-toxic components. The product base and the fragrance as well, they have to be non-toxic to humans and to nature and they have to degrade on all possible pathways. Once the product has reached at the end of its life cycle, it has to become a nutrition and not a waste. So how do we treat this topic at Lutzi? As we see that this topic is getting more and more attention, we've recently invested heavily into it. The main label around the circular economy is cradle to cradle or simply C to C. We have identified two major challenges when it comes to a rapid launch of a new C to C product. Firstly, there still seems to be a lack of understanding on the customer side around the C2C certification requirements. And secondly, the certification of a fragrance oil can take a quite a long time. So we solved the first issue by acquiring the relevant knowledge ourselves and by supporting our customers accordingly. And we solved the second issue with what we call a C2C fragrance toolbox, which is, to my knowledge, unique so far and really cool. Because if you create a fragrance using this toolbox, your fragrance is automatically C2C Gold certified. This dramatically reduces your time to market. Now to get there, we've been collaborating with two local brands. One brand is a cosmetics brand which already has a C2C Gold certified product on the market and which is now launching a fragrance variant. And with the other one, we are developing something quite groundbreaking, namely C2C Gold Certified Capsules. Now these capsules, they aren't for detergents or softeners, but for a rather niche application. So while this specific project might be um, economically relatively small, it allows us to further develop our technological skills and to um, demonstrate our um, capabilities and it will then allow us in a second step to roll out this technology to different application fields. Thank you, Roland, for talking about biodegradability. And you're opening a subject to certification with the cradle to cradle certification. So we talk about certification towards the end of our conversation. Now I'm turning back to you, Xavier. We talked about sourcing. We talked about biodegradability. We also need to mention eco-design. And we always say in our industry or any industry that innovation and creativity drives off constraints, right? Drives off constraints. So could you give us examples of innovation generated by constraints? Innovation generated by constraints, I mean, <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a good question, and, and, and I think, uh, again, going back to the Ambrofix story was a, was a, a, a good example. Uh, upcycling is a good example. The, you know, the, the fact that we want to create uh, or generate sustainability towards the creation of our products is a constraint. So the solution is always coming from a situation, and I think, you know, um, if we, if we talk about uh, uh, the constraint of, for example, uh, creating a fragrance 
that will be sustainable. That's also, you know, it's also one thing we, we, we can look at. Uh, what, what, what do we do uh, uh, to create a better, uh, more sustainable fragrances? You know, again, that's a, that's a constraint. And we look at it and we come up with very simple solutions. A very simple solution is to actually, you know, create fragrances that are uh, uh, that are created, that are designed in a way where you know you're going to have a much more impactful fragrance, and uh, where you're going to be using a much lower dosage. You know, that's that's a that's a solution based on uh, on constraint. Um, when we look at the uh, when we look at our uh, far, uh, at, at the way we want to create new molecule. You know, the innovation is called five carbon path. It's a way to look at using, leveraging the carbon in the, in the creation of ingredients that is actually very uh, innovative because at the end you have a highly impactful ingredient. So again, this is a constraint. So everything that we do when it comes to sustainability is an innovation because we have a constraint. And we may actually complete your, your saying and then your answer with very concrete examples from a perfumer perspective. So Natalie, could you please support, what do you do as a perfumer to develop sustainable formula in a simple way? So basically for, for, for the perfumer, first of all, uh, our company Expression Parfumé is uh, like uh, a raw fragrance we are supplying from uh, outside, mainly with uh, Givaudan being part of Givaudan company, but we need to unify our palette first and to uh, put in light some sustainable raw material and renewable and all this. But as a perfumer, we need also to uh, reshape our mind and to uh, dive into a, a new sort of creating, a uh, new sort of creation of our own formula Maybe in uh, also, uh, like uh, Xavier was saying, uh, the, the, the fact to be more uh, concentrated and less solvent use, using, so what we call in Expression Parfumé a prorata uh, project. This is one part. And also uh, to, to dive into uh, uh, using some uh, shorter formula, cleaner formula, every line is important. To, uh, to the olfactive uh, uh, perspective of the perfumer. Yes. It's very important to, uh, for the new generation of perfumer uh, through this sustainability uh, constraint, because there is a lot of constraint also as uh, deciding which uh, raw material can be sustainable in terms of societal, environmental, and uh, economical. So through labels that we will talk after, uh, it's also deciding uh, which are the best uh, option for a perfumer to use. Uh, 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 the Roma best combination uh, possible uh, between these three factors. Yes, right. exactly. And then as an habit also, uh, leaving behind us a way of formulating through a formula with Breuer formula inside with a, a several level of formula. So. You, you are, you're digging into a, a more conscious way to formulate. That's lovely, that's clear. Now we covered sourcing, biodegradability, yeah. eco-design, and we're gonna talk about production with Dominique. Yeah, because so to create all of that, we, you have to be in a certain location, and physical location, and that's why we'd like to uh, hear uh, Roland Altenberger from uh, uh, Luzi, uh, to um, talking about this new facility that uh, Luzi had just uh, built uh, in Zurich and which uh, aims at uh, reducing uh, the environmental, uh, I always have difficulties with this word, is environmental impact. So we are going to listen to Roland from Luzi. Calpita, if you don't mind. So for my family and me, it was clear that if we had the chance to build new premises for our headquarters, from where we still generate around 80% of our global operations, it has to be edgy. Not only in terms of creativity and well-being at the workplace, but also in terms of sustainability. So since the beginning, we wanted to lay the foundations 
for climate neutral operations, a certification which we have just recently received. So how do we do it? Such a project always starts with the right selection of the shape of your building because you need to minimize the ratio between the surface of a building and its volume because it's through the surface where heat and cold are lost. Then you need great insulation. Heat and cold must be obtained from a renewable source. We use geothermal probes for that. Shading is a topic. The color of a building is a topic. Um, LED lighting is a topic. And if you look at the operations, there's also a lot of levers that you can use. We used to pump raw materials onto the compounding system using compressed air. Now we're using gravity, which means we store our raw materials one floor above the compounding system. Other power guzzlers in a fragrance factory are cold rooms and heat rooms. These are now connected, which means that we're using the heat produced from the cooling system of the cooling room to heat up the heat room. So with these measures and some more, we were able to reduce our scope 1 greenhouse gas emissions around 80%. But to obtain climate neutral operations, you also have to consider your scope 3 emissions coming from business travel and from employee commuting. And this is where it gets more difficult. We all know how important it is to regularly see our customers, so we want to travel. At the same time, COVID has taught us that even fragrance presentations are possible remotely. But obviously this needs very well preparation on the side of the fragrance house and the willingness on behalf of the customer to accept such a presentation. Now looking at employee commuting, reductions are a bit easier to achieve. But here as well, reductions need time and the willingness of the workforce to change their behavior. So this is what we did. We are offering all our employees charging stations with 100% renewable electricity for free. 80% of our company cars in Europe are purely electric. We motivate our staff to commute by bicycle, by public transport or by carpools. Also we motivate those of our workforce who can do so by the nature of their work to work remotely twice a week. And this measure is often underestimated. This is not only about improving the work-life balance of your staff. It's also a very easy and effective way of cutting your commuting emissions. At the end of the day, zero emissions operations are not possible, at least not with the current state of technology. Therefore, we have to compensate the non-avoidable emissions. And I know that this is a controversial topic. But properly planned and implemented, compensations do make totally sense. What is important if we invest into a compensation project is that this project actually removes CO2, which otherwise would not have been removed. So we have made it. We are certified as climate neutral. But when it comes to other certifications, I have to be completely transparent. We don't have any other certification yet. We are aiming for an EcoBody certification next year and obviously we are targeting a top rating. At the same time we have to acknowledge that there are already quite a few other companies in our industry with a top rating, gold or even platinum. And to make clear what that means, to get a platinum rating you have to be among the top 1% of your peer group. So the bars are set high. And the more companies which strive for a top rating, the more difficult it becomes to get such rating or to defend it. The peer group, by the way, are companies from the chemical industry in general. And this is something I would really like to underline. The fact that there are so many fragrance houses already with a top rating within this peer group shows that we as an industry are doing a pretty good job. And it's something that we should acknowledge and we should also be proud of. You know, this is how I see it. We might be competitors in front of our customers. Yes, we are. But in front of nature, we are allies. Thank you, Roland, for talking about how to embed sustainability across the supply chain, especially at the production stage, and then with your introduction to certification. We still have three topics to cover today. We'd love to talk about certification, sustainability index, and collaboration. Do you still hear me clearly?
Okay. So when it comes to certification, you know it's a bit overwhelming in the industry because there are so many. You have the Ecovadis, the Sedex, the B Corp, the Fell for Life, the Fair Wild. So which one should we select as a supplier or as a producer? So I'm turning to you. Yes. Tell us a bit more, Antoine. <coughs> so um, as we are a little bit the, the baby of the industry, we looked, um, when we started um, to build our uh, sustainability strategy, obviously we looked at also what the others were doing, and there was one common pattern that everyone is certified by Ecovadis. And we felt it was the right thing to do as a starting point. It's a, it's a good certification. It helps you to see where you're doing the right thing, but also where there is room for improvement. They have um, an academy also, so they can support uh, your work to better work with your supplier. And uh, now we also, um, in January 2023, we will also work with uh, SEDEX, which is uh, also a, a platform which will help us to build a better supply chain and um, minimize ethical risk and everything. Then, of course, there are still also the, the ISO standard norm, which are important. So we got the 9001 for um, everything which is about safety and the 40001, which is about uh, environ environmental system. And uh, we also adhered uh, last year to um, Global Compact uh, United Nations with the, the 10 principle. And we are inspired, of course, with the 17 uh, SDGs. And now, as you say, what, what's the next step? I looked a little bit at B Corp, but that's a long way to go. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this because each company is standing somewhere else here around the panel in matter of certification. So I'm turning to you, Nathalie, now. How does it work at Expression Parfumé in matter of certification? Where are you standing? So uh, uh, in the... In 2006, uh, Expression Parfumé was uh, uh, the pioneer in doing a NATCO uh, formula. So, of course, NATCO uh, is using 100% uh, natural. It's nothing alike like having a sustainability because nat natural and sustainability is not always the same subject. Huh? But uh, because we, uh, we were the first uh, willing to change the perspective also from our cl client uh, requested to uh, change the perspective of formulation, formulating, uh, they, the customers help us also to have more transparency and start to work uh, through the, the years with first NATCO, then now uh, sustainable uh, uh, formula. So. It's also a, a way of communicating with the, uh, the, the, cl the client and also learning through the, the years with them to um, uh, perform and to be more in sustainability and transparency because the, la the labels, again, are very, very quite uh, few and we need to decide which, which direction. And it's not only Expression Parfumé. It should be all the company putting together, together a way to choose their the right standard their level. and the right KPI. Yes. Thank you, Natalie, for sharing. And then, Alice, come to Elema. There was something in particular that we wanted to touch upon today. It's fair for life, if I'm not mistaken, right? Sure. So we have different certifications. Obviously, there are so many certifications in the industry, it's quite difficult to catch up. Uh, one of the main issues also, that, as we touched base earlier in the discussion, is that we don't have a convergence on the definitions, per se, on each attribute, biodegradability. Uh, we kind of have a, a, a consensus on renewability, but other terms we don't really know. We chose at LMR to go for the Fair for Life, the For Life, and also the, the Fair Wild certifications, because they really, they really have an interesting sustainability value proposition, and they correspond to the, the, they make a real impact in terms of corporate social responsibility for the people, the livelihood of the communities. Well, nice, yeah. It's a really holistic certification that allows us to, to measure that. 
and the key um, examples for that would be, for example, the vanilla that we that is uh, certified fair for life. We have also the pure balsam that's cer certified fair wild. So fair wild is the certification that corresponds to for life, but for wild plants, okay. not agricultural uh, crops. And as we touched base early with the sandalwood, it is certified for life, but we're currently in the process of uh, auditing it to become fair for life. And really what we're trying to do at LMR is look at all the different options we can make a difference. The soil fertility, teaching the right agronomy instructions to farmers, how to make it more efficient, how to improve the working conditions directly at source, how to improve the ecosystem, the biodiversity, and communities in general. And once we have this aspect, once we have this vertically integrated platform, as we discussed before, it's, it becomes more, more clear how to make the impact. And I will also finish by saying that the, the key corporate social responsibility approach is to have an embedded, uh, an, an authentic, a genuine approach and not just treat it as a superficial appendix, an add-on. And I think that this specific certification for life, fair for life, allow us to, to go in the, this approach. It was crystal clear for everyone, so thank you for sharing. We'll see. <laughs> and now we go even one step further with the B Corp certification. Xavier, do you hear me? Yeah, we're okay. talking about B Corp. B Corp certification. Yes. So please guide us on the topic. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting because, you know, we, um, we had this ambition, which was to uh, become, we have this ambition, which is to become uh, B Corp certified. And um, throughout the journey, uh, we realized that, uh, you know, I don't think we can make any commitment towards exactly the date we're going to be certified because it's going to be, it's because there's a lot that is based that is actually out of our control because it's very much related to not so much what we do, but what our suppliers do. So many, many things that, are, that we've noticed. First of all, it is a journey. Second of all, we're probably going to be, um, we, we will uh, be certified um, in different steps. We will probably start with a region um, and then we'll move on to a more global approach. And one thing that we've also noticed in that working with some of our customers, you know, because I was very interested in, uh, in talking to Natura & Co. out of Brazil, why is it that they are B Corp certified? And when sustainability is actually embedded into your DNA, it is something that is much easier than actually doing it after, I mean, we've been in business for 250 years, so I can actually ensure you that 250 years, sustainability was not part of any conversation. But when you actually build, you know, a business like uh, Natura, which started in 1969, you know, it is something that easier. So it is a journey. It is a commitment. We don't have a specific date. We will be doing it, um, you know, little by little. We are working very closely with our suppliers. 75 to 80 percent of the B Corp will be coming from the way we, uh, we, uh, we work with our suppliers. So it's going to be key that... We, talk, we take our time, but when we do it, we do it seriously and we become certified for the right reason. Thank you, Xavier, for sharing. And you know, let's be honest, it's nice to become a gold, platin, a gold member, a platinum member. It's always nice to receive an award, but what's really important is to track our continuous improvement and then to be transparent towards our collaborator and partners and to show that we are all moving towards this, the right direction. So here you could see around the panel that we have different level of certification, but we are all moving forward the same direction. And now Dominique is gonna take over on sustainability index, which is also a key topic in our industry. Yeah, this is, this is very um, important. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is very uh, a hot topic, the, this uh, sustainability index, because lots of the companies uh, and lots of the suppliers are building them their own sustainability index. And uh, as everyone has it so developed in a specific tool, uh, we are wondering so what these tools are and how maybe can they can be unified uh, so that the whole industry can be more readable for the customers, for their customers, for the end customers. 
uh, we will uh, uh, use the perfume in the end. So, Antoine, maybe if you can explain yes. to us a little bit what is what so it's about. <coughs> about uh, the index table. So the index table is a is a way to see the um, the quality of the palette of all the ingredients, but not necessarily in terms of olfactive part, but what is the impact on the planet and everything. So again, through our ICON program, so we decided, that, for example, to, to have uh, several criteria, like uh, is it uh, biodegradable, is it uh, eco-cert, is it uh, upcycle, is it uh, from ethical sourcing, for example. Most of the information comes from our supplier, but you're not sure that they have the same way to, to calculate it. But at the end of the day, still it's a good first step because it helps perfumers to work with the, those uh, information. But at the end of the day, to make it uh, simple, you may have uh, the same formula in one company will say, oh, it's 90% sustainable, and another one will be say, with the same formula, it's 95, and another one, it's 85. So as you said, there is today no real government, governance, and I think we all agree that we need one. If we wait for a legislator to do it, it will take ages, and they don't understand our business, so it will not be good. So I think there is a common uh, agreement that maybe IFRA, who has done a fantastic job on safety, should take the lead. They started it with uh, the IFRA charter, which is going, uh, giving a lot of guidelines, but not really the way of calculating. So maybe it would be the, the right KPI the next calculating. Step. Yes, exactly. And I would just give an example because I, I heard a documentary on um, Emmanuel Faber, the ex CEO of um, Danone, <coughs> who is now working to develop accounting standard for companies so that at the end of the day, the accounting is not only about EBITDA for the shareholders, but it will be the rule result for all stakeholders. And I think it, it's a bit common. Uh, so then it's, it, it's when a you good have example that it's moving forward. So. Well, the right KPIs are fixed, then yes, you can improve exactly. yourself. Exactly. And then you are, how do you say that, accountable for it. Yes. Thank you for sharing. And now, we already talked about the integrated platform yeah, with Michelle. Okay. So let's move directly to Nathalie. Nathalie, yes. Yes, so for us in Expression Parfumé, we put in place the Conscience Index. Uh, thanks to also the collaboration with the Gibaudan to give us more uh, it's a, a sort of partnership, but we have our own index, like uh, Antoine was saying, every uh, company is building their own index. Uh, this is uh, uh, also something uh, to, to be uh, in the discussion with all the, all the company, because as uh, Antoine was referring, some can have a different score in terms of uh, uh, conscience index, like index of their own formula. So what uh, we are doing in Expression Parfumé is like we are uh, testing, we are in a beta test for this conscious index and uh, we will be releasing in 2023. But it's also uh, linked to uh, Givaudan participation and uh, it's very important also to, uh, to have this communication between uh, a sister company, still to have a communication through this sort of index that are implanted in every different company with every each name as uh, each company has their own uh, name of uh, index. Thank you for sharing the good news on beta testing. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. Xavier, what about yeah, you? I, I, you I, I you've talked about the Nagoya protocol in the discussion. I'm sorry. You talked about the. I Nag just want to say something on the uh, on the index, J just real quick. For us, the index is not a it's not a number. It's not 7.5 out of 10. Where are you good? Where are you not? You know, this is not at all. An index, like you can find in some uh, application in the uh, in uh, in real life, an index is a working tool that uh, that allows us to design fragrances that are fit to the consumers. I go back to my first point. You know, what do consumers, what do brands expect from us? We have to truly have this conversation with the brand and the communication, and this naturality index that we're building allows us. It's, a, it's like a music equalizer. It allows us to be, to design, to improve um, 
the fragrances that we create according to specific needs. You know, to be honest with you, biodegradability and fine fragrance, one could argue that I would rather push renewability, even though the ingredients that we are developing are renewable and biodegradable, but one could argue, you know, the benefit of biodegradability and fine fragrance, you know? So this type of thing allows us to really deliver and create and design products that are good for the environment, for the, uh, the consumer, the brand, and the, uh, and, the, yeah, and the end consumer. So, and Nagoya, real quick, um, I would say one thing, you know, this is, the, it's, it's an amazing initiative. Giving back um, is key to, uh, to this uh, circular process that we've been talking about. Um, for many, many years, um, we've been using, uh, whether it's natural products or uh, coming from uh, uh, various parts of the world without giving back. Today, giving back is key. It's our responsibility. We need to build it, yes, as part of our PNL, of course. That's what we do. But uh, if, we don't, um, if we don't engage with Nagoya, that would be totally unfair. And unfair is not sustainable in the, uh, in the way we do business. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think some of you talked about IFRA, for instance, and I know next uh, week there will be the Global IFRA Summit at uh, Sao Paulo. So I'll have the chance to be, to, to be particip participating. And this is the, 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 the main topics are biodiversity also and sustainability and innovation. And I think IFRA has really the, this intention to try to uh, 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 to be uh, um, uh, uh, to build this uh, this uh, index, uh, hence this uh, collaboration with IOFI uh, about the chart, uh, sustainability charter. But they, they know they have much more; they have a long way <laughs> to go. But the, the, this is uh, this is something they're really really um, keen to do. Lovely. And then we'd like to talk quickly about collaboration. Because we got the chance this year to go through a book called Net Positive, written by Paul Polman and Andrew Winston, and showing that collaboration could accelerate exponentially the speed of change and embed sustainability in our supply chain. So then we need to celebrate as well small wins and then to highlight collaboration that we find in our industry because we're all moving towards the same direction and we can be faster if we are together. So we wanted to highlight here a few collaborations. The first one was uh, with LMA with farmers. We already touched a point. The second one was around um, consumer awareness and education. If you'd like just to touch a few words, Antoine, well, around consumer education. Yes. <coughs> um, there, there are different types of, uh, of uh, customers. And uh, it's clear that some of them are already very oriented about sustainability, but some of them, they, they don't see why they should change, they, they have the impression that it will be more expensive and everything. So it, it's really up to us to come with a proactive uh, presentation about the importance. And what uh, you were saying before also, it's at the end of the day, consumer will ask for it more and more. Mm -hmm. So there is, the only way is to go forward. There is no way back. No way so, back. No. And as it comes to Expression Parfumé as well, the collaboration that you engage, because it's also a kind of collaboration, is a great way. Yes, of course, uh, like uh, uh, Xavier mentioned before, uh, we are, uh, as Expression Parfumé being a sister company, we are provide, uh, our supplier are mainly uh, Givaudan, and we, of course, we are, we are talking about Ambrofix before, and we are still collaborating to have like patchouli renew, uh, uh, sourcing, uh, sustainability sourcing, uh, the renewable of Jasmonal. So it's a, a, again a co collaboration, it's a partnership. very tight, but also co co collaboration between uh, company and collaboration mm -hmm. between uh, people around. Like we're in Expression Parfumé, we sign a five-year contracts for uh, the harvest of uh, lavanda in Quercy region. So it's all about uh, going in collaboration through companies and through uh, local people around us 
in terms of distance as well, which is very important in sustainability. That's great. And there is another point that we need to quickly talk about. It's you are mentioning, Xavier, that eventually collaboration would be encouraged by brands themselves. Would you like to tell us a bit more on this? Yeah, I think, again, it's, it's, a, it's a process. I mean, you know, the, the, the brands are engaging us to work in a much more collaborative way with them. And, and you know, as, as you were talking, I thought of something that happened to me about 10 years ago. I was with a head of R&D at, uh, at Bayersdorf, and he told me, you know what? I get my best idea from the car industry. So I looked at the guy, I thought, you know, funny guy, but you know, but he meant, I mean, and that was key. And today, we cannot just be looking at ourselves. We have to first, you know, be working together with our customers, under understanding the brand and understanding what they want from us and us to really work with other suppliers. We talked about Lanza Tech where, you know, we talk about creating uh, uh, new ingredients from uh, renewable carbons coming from uh, waste gases from CO2. I mean, this is something that, you know, we'd, we would have never thought about uh, years ago, but you know, it's all coming from, again, consumers, what the brands are designing for the consumers and how they're working with us in order to be, uh, to be more sustainable uh, for the long term. If I may complete as well what you just said, because throughout our different interviews, there's one key message that came, that came out, is that international, multinational brands like L'Oreal, for example, will encourage its suppliers to use a common palette of natural ingredients that are sustainable with the fragrance partners. So at this stage, L'Oreal is also driving the ESG in our industry. And now just last question to, uh, before leaving you all, it's an amazing panel. Uh, where do you see the future of perfumery? So in a few words, in two, three words, each one of you, where do you see the future of perfumery going? Antoine, we're gonna start by you. Okay, uh, I think the f future of perfumery is a lot about what we were saying, no? about uh, designing uh, fantastic perfume, but which will be uh, much more sustainable. I think there should be much more collaboration uh, within the industry. And uh, of course, there is all the impact of uh, digitalization and uh, artificial intelligence. We will have a huge impact on everything we're doing. And, and tomorrow, we will have a, a round table around artificial intelligence, how to leverage AI to better our industry. And then we will showcase a collaboration, the fruit of a collaboration between Euro Fragrance and Chem Chain. And Chem Chain, yes. So an AI startup specialized in regulatory affairs. Michel? Yes, yes Chem Chain, it's a platform will help uh, taking all the data of your consumers and transfer them automatically to uh, your MSDS documents. So it's Fantastic. really uh, removing a lot of work and it's done automatically so there is no uh, Error. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. Michel, in a few words, the future of perfumery? Sure. I think that the, the future of perfumery really, to take a concrete example, I think that the, the LMR Conscious Extracts Collection uh, is a good, is a good uh, sign of how we should move forward because it's all about mm -hmm. finding, leveraging innovation, creating new effective signatures, creating excitement on the marketplace, but also taking the right steps. And I think every single company in the industry can bring something to the table. Every, every company has an input to, sh to, to share. Uh, maybe not every company has the same capa capabilities, but there is uh, definitely small, simple steps that can be taken every day to advance and to create uh, the future of perfumery. Thank you, Michel. And now we have Nathalie. Yes. I would say also our awareness, uh, because all this linked to the change climate, so awareness is a part of an education, uh, like we said, to the customers to be aware that the world is changing and we need to adapt and to, uh, to be more conscious about the impact of our uh, print carbon uh, on, this, uh, on this world, <laughs> because at the end is the, is the final step. And, uh, and also uh, education of the future perfumer, uh, future I mean, every department should be conscious and uh, educated about uh, sustainability, biodegradability. So all the workshops are necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Nathalie. And Xavier, the future of perfumery? Um, Two words? See, we, 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 
three years ago, we came up with our new purpose at Gibraltar. It's about creating for a happier, healthier life with love for nature. And I think it says it all. I think the future is super bright. I think there's going to be an evolution due to the environment. There's going to be a lot of fighting back because, you know, we are under pressure. But if we do the right job, if we work together, if we start, I mean, collaboration is a key word for me. Um, we are entering a, a, a super uh, exciting journey where I still believe that the power of fragrance and uh, the positive effect it has to consumers will be key to, uh, for consumers to live better lives. So I see that if we do the right thing, if we are responsible, if we, uh, if we work together, we can truly create a highly positive impact to the consumers and the, and the environment, so I'm, I'm super, super positive. So collaboration, collaboration, awareness, eco-design, and artificial intelligence technology. So thank you very much for attending the panel today around sustainability, and we're looking forward to having you on board tomorrow around artificial intelligence, how to better our industry. Thank you all, and thank you to our panelists. It was beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.